In today's world, we can watch videos and listen to music by connecting to the internet over our high-speed fibre network or 4G wireless network. We can even talk to the President of the United States anytime, anywhere on Twitter. We can also learn what the Kardashian sisters had for breakfast and order the same meal delivered without even having to leave our homes. Our world today seems to be so completely interconnected that it has become to known as a global village. But is that really the case? There are more than 7.6 billion people in the world today. How many of these people don't have access to even basic internet services? 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion, even more? In this video, we'll take a look at just how global our internet coverage really is and how SpaceX's Starlink project will potentially solve this issue in the future. So, the number of people around the globe who can't access the internet in 2018 is 3.5 billion, or nearly 50% of the human population. These people can't access even the most basic internet, a service that most of the rest of us largely take for granted. This includes 2 billion in Asia and over 800 million in Africa. Nowadays, for most of us, the internet is a daily essential, as reliably and cheaply available as water and electricity. This number is indeed shocking. Almost one half of the people who live in our so-called global village. Why are there so many people who can't get online? First of all, there is the infrastructure cost. Rolling out those fibre optic cables, which are the most popular standard around the globe to provide internet connectivity, is an expensive activity. But the installation and materials cost of fibre optic cabling and the supporting infrastructure raise dramatically in areas with inaccessible terrain such as mountains, swamps or islands. Meanwhile, add that there is a low population density in these high cost infrastructure region and costs rapidly rise to make for a commercially non-viable business model for most installation companies. Secondly, Many countries and people are still living in extreme poverty conditions. Their government or locally owned telecom business just can't afford the billions of dollars to build a large land-based network and then spend millions of dollars every year thereafter to maintain it. Besides that, most of the people who are living in these conditions face a daily struggle just to get electricity, clean water and food. It is impossible for them to afford any smartphones. Thirdly, in these developing countries, the quality of the education system lags far behind the developed countries. According to recent statistics from the United Nations, the world still has about 15% illiteracy rate. This lack of local skilled telecommunication personnel necessary to meet large-scale construction needs and to provide the ongoing maintenance service adds yet another obstacle. Thus, it is that, in many remote areas of the world, People are usually connected to the internet through the use of large geostationary satellites. These school bus sized instruments provide much slower connections at a much greater cost to the consumer. You will probably ask, when can everyone in the world use the internet? Is that even possible? What are the solutions? Well, some companies think that a possible way to get about half of the planet's unconnected population into a network is by sending smaller satellites into what are now called low Earth orbits. One of the most famous pioneers, I believe you should all be very familiar with his name and company, is Elon Musk and SpaceX. SpaceX's Starlink project is aiming to make the internet accessible to all of humankind. According to Musk's vision, from 2019 to 2020, a large-scale satellite launch would place about 800 satellites into a low Earth orbit above the United States. By 2024, another 4,425 small satellites would be deployed, 750 miles above the Earth. In step three, SpaceX will further deploy more than 7,500 additional satellites to be located 210 miles above the Earth. Being in these two low Earth orbits will reduce latency or delays in communication. 
Eventually, more than 12,000 satellites will encircle the Earth, providing high-speed internet access services to all corners of the globe. The Starlink constellation of satellites will form a mesh-like network in space and will use the V-band, which covers 40 gigahertz to 75 gigahertz to connect with each other. They'll then use KAKU radio bands to deliver internet service to earthbound receivers. Users will only need to have a laptop-sized terminal to gain connectivity, and the personal user's bandwidth is expected to exceed one gigabyte per second. This is very good news for potential internet users around the world. So, why launch low orbit satellites? What about the existing high orbit satellites? Aren't these satellites providing telephone and internet access already? Since the 1960s, hundreds of communications and broadcasting satellites have been sent into high orbit. These satellites have been playing the leading role in the implementation of international long-distance communications and television transmission. However, there are some problems with the high orbit satellite model. Number one. In free space, the signal intensity is inversely proportional to the square of transmission distance. The existing geostationary equatorial orbit satellite system orbits far above the Earth's equator and therefore each satellite needs a large aperture communication antenna. Meanwhile, picture yourself holding a one meter antenna while browsing the internet. Number two. The long distance transmission of the signal means high latency or long transmission delay. In telephone calls, this delay can make people feel uncomfortable. In data communication, the delay limits the transmission response speed. For any computer nowadays, even a half second delay means that hundreds of millions of bytes of information get stuck in the buffer. Number three, the availability of space in the high earth orbit lane is limited. There is only one high Earth orbit, and there should be enough space between adjacent satellites to avoid interference. In practice, this high Earth orbit can only accommodate about 180 satellites, which also includes many of the less useful positions above the ocean. Low Earth orbit satellites have many advantages in personal global communications. The altitude of these satellites is only 1 over 20 to 1 over 80 of that of high orbit satellites. So, its path loss is usually much lower than that of the high orbit satellite. The transmitted power is 1 over 200 to 1 over 2000 of the high orbit satellite, and the propagation delay is only 1 over 75. This makes it possible to achieve the low latencies required by modern handheld devices. It sounds like a much better alternative, doesn't it? However, due to the relationship between the operating cycle and the inclination of the orbit, the low orbit satellite communication satellites cannot hold a stationary position above the Earth. Also, unlike large satellites operating 22,000 miles above the Earth, low orbit satellites require a network of hundreds of satellites in order to work properly which greatly increases operational complexity and operating costs. In order to ensure 24-7 uninterrupted communications to any point on Earth, it is necessary to carefully configure multiple orbits and to launch a large group of communication satellites, each with strong processing power. The stable and reliable operation of such large and complex space systems involves a range of technical challenges and economic issues. Luckily, in recent years, advances in the development of supercomputers, microelectronics and small satellite technologies make it possible to solve the problems associated with establishing a large-scale, low-Earth orbit satellite communication system. Well, the Starlink project from SpaceX is the low-Earth orbit satellite network we just talked about. Through groundbreaking technical progress in recent years, the theoretical feasibility may become reality in the next few years. However, we all know that a business needs to make a profit to sustain itself. SpaceX estimates that it will cost 10 billion just to get them started. Even if it actually succeeds as claimed, how is SpaceX ever going to make money? Let's have a look at the potential market demand. 
Number one, demand of the global consumer market. As mentioned previously, 3.5 billion of the world's population does not have access to the internet, with the majority of the population unable to use the internet because of cost. If you could provide easy access and offer cheap or even free internet access to the internet through this low orbit constellation, you can easily link to future growth opportunities for the company. Many developing countries and even some developed countries have limited internet penetration and many of their people still do not have access to the internet. Most live in remote and low density areas. According to the International Telecommunications Union, about 25% of the population in the United States do not have access to the internet. They can only communicate with the world by paying connection fees to expensive and extremely low satellite networks. Obviously, if Starlink can make high-speed, low-cost internet access a reality, servicing this segment of the population could add to its revenue stream. Lastly, there were more than 4 billion air passengers in 2018, and it is expected to double to nearly 8 billion by 2036. Similarly, in the cruise industry, according to projections by the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, 24 million of the world's tourists travelled by cruise ship in 2016, a figure which is expected to reach 40 million by 2036. Today, these air and ocean passengers can only communicate by using that expensive, slow and unreliable satellite system. Once Starlink is in its place, with its capability to offer a much better internet access experience, they can easily attract a large number of these users. Number two, demand of global enterprise markets. In developed countries, many large companies such as oil and railway operators have started working with local telecommunication providers to manage their networks through 4G wireless communications. But in many developing countries, and in the aviation and shipping industries, because of geographical, financial and policy limitations, the progress in providing smart and managed networks has been really slow. Just like consumers, companies also need faster connectivity so they can manage their products and services efficiently. A low orbit constellation network can also be a potential market for a wholesale backhaul provider it will greatly reduce the cost of laying optical fibre cables. Once Starlink is successful, they can resell backhaul capacity to retailers. In 2016, SpaceX successfully launched the Falcon 9 rocket into space and recovered it for the first time. In 2017, SpaceX successfully launched the recycled rocket, thus making history. Based on simple calculations, the fuel cost is only $200,000 compared to buying and fueling a new $54 million rocket. This is almost a 99% saving for subsequent use. Of course, we all know that, in reality, the recycling of second-hand goods can cost a lot in repairs and maintenance. Don't even mention that we're talking about rockets here. Besides the fuel, we'll need to add in personnel and hardware costs and the like. However, the average cost can indeed be further reduced as the frequency of using recycled rockets increases. In any case, it at least represents a good start to Starlink's ambition to launch 12,000 satellites and could largely reduce the project's costs. Will Starlink eventually succeed? When will all humans have access to the internet? We'll have to wait and see. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below and make sure you click like and subscribe.